Okay, so in this workshop update, we've got this 5 litre TVR in, which has previously been for us for chip upgrade and our ignition package um, several years ago now. Uh, it's developed a running fault though, which we've traced down to the fuel pump not getting full voltage. Now corrected, and we'll go up for a, um, a road test in that. The Cobra has now got its engine installed. We've done some work on the gear remote as well, so that's now uh, much more improved for selecting the gears you want rather than it being a lucky dip. And then the Defender, the engine has been out. We've stripped it down and have laid out all the components so you can see the horror story that we've got. It's now back in and running again. And um, we just it's finished, but we're just waiting for a couple of components to come through. Um, but that wasn't the worst engine we've stripped down in this episode. That is now about to come. We have just taken delivery of this 3.5 litre engine here. Uh, we're now building up uh, an engine for a MGB, um, and this is the gentleman's original engine that came out of it. It's an SD1 engine. Uh, he's already had it rebuilt uh, by a local engine builder to him who's been built supposedly many, many engines. But we're guessing from what we've seen here, this will be his first Rover V8 and hopefully last that he's built up. What we've uh, noticed, the gentleman drove 80 miles with this engine installed in his MG um, and the oil consumption was ridiculous and the engine was very smoky. Initially, if you come around this side Steve, um, we can see some rather large scoring in the bores. And they're uh, incredibly deep. Uh, we've got this piston removed at the moment and you can see it goes the entire length of where the uh, gudgeon pin runs. So. We looked at the bottom end and noticed that all of the con rods are facing the wrong way around. These two dimples here should be facing each other on each journal. However, on each and every journal, they are facing away from each other. And um, what the engine builder has done, normally you would uh, heat up the little end and then install the gudgeon pin into the piston and have it so the con rod, do you want to hold that? Yeah, I do. Yeah, go on then, Bring you hold away. that. Um, so have it so that the con rod is central in the piston and push the gudgeon pin through so that it's equal distance from the sides uh, of the piston. However, in this instance, what the engine builder has done is allowed the con rod to be at the base here and push the gudgeon pin in so it's flush there, leaving a huge distance there so half of that distance is actually the how far the gudgeon pin is now not pushed in and then by having the rods installed the wrong way around obviously it's actually pushed the gudgeon pin out into the bore and uh, carved the Grand Canyon in his freshly rebored block not very impressive uh, the other thing we just noticed was the wear on this timing chain sprocket and uh, if you look at the uh, timing gear he installed, judging by the colour of it, he decided to reuse the original one. Why you would do that, I have no idea. But, um, yeah, there we go. The customer is now having a fresh engine built up by us and uh, is looking forward to getting his second MG on the road. And he's got a GT and this one is a Roadster. So, uh, I think the engine build will not be in this workshop update because we've got a few more engines before that, but we will show you it while it's happening. Steve's uh, tucked into this job nicely, uh, got the cylinder heads off. Biggest thing we've seen on this, obviously these head gaskets, as we said earlier, uh, had been done when the heads had been replaced at some point. Someone had fit in tin gaskets, so we made the decision with the customer to just go in replaced with composite. It's a bloody good job we did, because we did a compression test on this engine, hot and cold. Compressions were excellent, but um, yeah, these gaskets would suggest otherwise. You can see uh, blowing points between cylinders, uh, blowing points going to the inside valley um, on a 10 bolt head. Uh, so yeah, 
good decision doing these head gaskets to composite. We've already straight edged the cylinder heads and they are fine. Um, other areas we're replacing on this is oil pump gears. It's going to be difficult to pick up on a camera I think, but on the inside here we have scoring on these edges here. But the biggest reason for replacing these are, they're such a low cost item and um, an item that can fail quite drastically and kill your engine. Uh, we've actually taken engines to bits of these in the past where they've been running but the uh, outer gear is split in a couple of places making the outer gear one pe uh, three pieces. So yeah it's a case of it's the, the heart of your engine, it's what pumps around your vital lubricant so it needs, uh, it needs to be in tip top condition so fitting a new one of them is key. Uh, camshaft wise, again it's difficult to pick up on the, uh, ca uh, on the camera but you can see the dishing we've got on the lifters here. Uh, this is probably the worst one. So typical of a camshaft that's just starting to wear. The discoloration on the camshaft as well, um, you can see we've got this brown tarnishing happening in the centre. So most would look at this camshaft and say, oh, you know, all the lobes are intact, it's fine. The lobes aren't actually intact, the t lobes are starting to round off on the very top there. Because of the dishing on the tappet, we're getting this discoloration uh, on the uh, heel of the cam lobe, where the tappet is no longer wiping it clean. Um, so yeah, Ideal time to catch this uh, camshaft wear now before this gets worse and catastrophic. Um, and uh, yeah, we've already taken the mains and big end bearings out, which aren't on the table. Steve might run through now in the background and uh, find them. Um, while he's doing that, I will just talk about the rocker shafts. Again, a low cost item. However, these, if there's lots of swarf in the engine, these will be full of um, oil and swarf. So we'll have um, replaced these. They're not badly scored on the underside. Um, they're just starting to polish themselves. There is a lip there. Again, the camera doesn't really pick it up, but I can feel it with my finger, which means it's several thou deep. Um, so they will get replaced. Again, they're not expensive at all, a pair of rocker shafts. Genuine rockers will get reused on those shafts. Now the bearings. Um, you can see here the big end bearing there. We are down to copper, so that will be replaced. Um, the crankshaft we've checked out is in really good condition. There's no scoring on the journals there. So that will, um, we've actually decided we're gonna pull the engine out. Originally we were gonna do them in situ, which means you can do all of them other than number five mains bearing. Um, but yeah, we're that far in, the heads are already off. It's only engine mounts and bell housing bolts to actually pull the short engine now out. We can have it on a stand, do everything really nicely, and then fit the whole thing back in when it's built up. So, um, yeah, that's this little section of the workshop update on the 90. Steve's done a great job then, removing the engine, as we said just a minute ago. Um, we've replaced the crank bearings throughout, fitted an ARP stud kit on the mains. Rear crank seal, genuine rear crank seal, that's all we use now on them, so we had some failures of the aftermarket ones that we've been using for donkey's years but uh, a couple of failures is a couple too many for us. Brand new rocker shafts, brand new oil pump gears, brand new Piper Torque Max camshaft, complete with OEM lifters, brand new push rods, and it, by the looks of things, I know he checked the uh, preload, it has not required shimming. So we did have the head skimmed as well, and um, so there was a little bit of a, a mark on the heads from the, or indentation on the heads from the original tin, gaskets. Steve's going to now uh, finish this off by fitting the inlet manifold and rocker covers just prior to putting it back in here. However, before it goes back in there, it's also made my life a lot easier because I've now got to check out the electrics and they're on the bulkhead. So um, I'm going to do that now. <sighs> Look, you with an engine bay is like a cat with a cardboard box. <laughs>
So that's being done. We've also got a temperature gauge on order, uh, which I think has just turned up in the post for it because as with most uh, V8 conversions from diesels, the temperature gauge is reading high uh, because the sender and gauge aren't calibrated. So we've got a new gauge and uh, sender in now for it. Um, and we're also going to uh, check the ECU uh, just to get that refinement in the fueling system. A bit flappy and noisy in here. A lot like the uh, the organ we were in in the last episode, Steve. Or a bit like you. What, bit, I'm flappy and windy. Yeah, a bit flappy and noisy. <laughs> so yeah, being a 3.9, um, it obviously doesn't have as much torque down the bottom end like the 4.6 does. But it still does everything really you'd want a Defender to do. Uh, the 4 6 has come into their own really when you're doing a lot of towing or, or want that extra bottom end torque, obviously. But for just normal everyday driving, the 3 9 will tick almost all the boxes, really. KA is not the only kind of Ford that Ian likes. That's the 90 finished. Um, so I think the next bit of this little episode will be the machining work on the Cobra, won't it Steve? Yes. Yeah, so uh, what you'll see next is the, um, the remote off the gearbox that required a little bit of modification. Some intense lathe action. Yes. The engine that Holly has built up then has been fully dressed with all of the parts that have come out of this Cobra kit car and is now coupled onto the RT77 gearbox ready to be installed. Steve's not here this week in the workshop but that doesn't stop us, we keep going. Um, the gear remote that we'd previously mentioned in our workshop update video, as you can see somebody's already shortened it, they've uh, taken a section out of the middle and uh, the issue there is there's two bushes that the shaft slides through and those two bushes are now one in the centre which Steve will now overlay a little video of on the modifications we did to put a little bronze bush in there which has given it a lot more stability and um, obviously road testing will be the final test on that one. So I started off by machining out the uh, gearbox remote to 20mm here uh, the original bushes were a lot smaller and very thin, and one of them had actually fallen out. Forgot to actually photograph a video of that beforehand, sorry about that. Uh, then we just drilled the ID out of this bigger bush, out of the rear of a crankshaft, um, so that we could hold it, uh, lock tight it on the, the drill bit, which then enables you to hold it and machine the entire outside. So we turned this down to a smidgen over 20 mil, so it'd be a press fit into the gearbox remote itself. And then obviously uh, just heat it up the Loctite and uh, then we can clamp it into the lathe and turn out the inside so that the uh, selector shaft will uh, be a nice smooth operation in here. After that, um, just pressed it into the housing uh, with some Loctite around it as well. And there you can see the shaft is now moving a lot smoother uh, before it was very, very wiggly. Well, here the engine is then, um, all installed by Holly. We even got him doing electrics. Uh, so we removed the original Lumination ignition system, installed the RPI power amplifier, and converted the ignition back to a 12 volt coil rather than having its ballasted setup. 4.6 engine, obviously slides in place just like the 3.5 did originally because all the bolt patterns for engine mounts and bell housing, etc., are the same. Makes our life really easy. Uh, this is actually complemented with stage 1 cylinder heads and a Piper 270 camshaft. Obviously a 4.6 and a lightweight car is going to have enough torque down the bottom end. Um, and stage 1 is just going to uh, liven up the mid-rev range for us there. Magna core plug leads of course onto a brand new distributor. 
and uh, reusing the customer's original uh, Edelbrock carburetor setup, but obviously it's been rejetted for a 4.6 litre engine. I think that just leaves us for a road test then. Go and see how that gear stick works okay. out. Off we go then. Do you want to turn the key? If I can reach it, wherever it is. Well, you're miles off at the moment. It's Am the I? It's in the middle. I was actually pointing at it with the camera. You messed that up, didn't you? <laughs> Cobra then. Gearbox is now a lot better. You can actually go one, two, three, four, five um, without counting like a two-year-old. Although actually most two-year-olds can, I think, believe, can't they? I think so. Not had much experience with them, so I don't really know. Um, yeah, the 4.6 engine, just bags and bags and bags of torque in this lightweight kit car. Um, an absolute pleasure to drive. We do the fifth test all the time, obviously. Um, this you could just pull away in fifth and obviously slip the clutch for a, a half a second or a second just to get the momentum going. But yeah, it just masses of torque there. So that's, uh, we're really happy with that. We'll go out and uh, get some videos. Tailpipes, we need to have a look. We're not sure if a baffle's loose in the science or something, but there's a, a really weird squeak coming from the exhaust. It almost sounds like a belt, but there's no belts in there. We checked, and for once, it isn't me in the passenger seat. Yeah, yeah, you're not squealing today. That was on the off road trip, wasn't it? Yes. Some pulling power. It's certainly got some pulling power. The bloke in that Audi realised after we um, he tried getting past, didn't he? Yes. Yeah, um, it's doing everything it should do. Really struggling for things to say. The Weber carburetor is um, actually I'd forgotten it got a carburetor on it. <laughs> managed to find a flat spot. It's driving lovely. You squirt it, it goes, and you know it, it does that. Um, Gearbox is a hell of a lot better. I can now find all the gears. And the road we were about to go down, Steve, is closed. Boys in blue. Yes. Okay, so we won't go that way then. So 5 litre TVR, I think those that follow our YouTube and Facebook videos will know what's coming. Um, these are renowned in the TVR world for being jerky cars, you can't drive them slow and steady, um, you know they kangaroo back and forth. We get so many in, uh, not just 5 litres, 4 litres as well, uh, Griff's Camaras, the 4.5s. Um, all with the same underlying issues, poor, lack, poor spark quality or lack of spark um, size and duration and um, uh, incorrect fueling obviously. So that's all corrected, we've previously done this one. Um, this one actually came in, it had a bad wire that was breaking down uh, so the fuel pump wasn't getting full voltage. Um, effectively it had a rev limit of 4,500 RPM because the fuel pressure was just tailing off. Obviously the engine was leaning out which isn't ideal. So um, yeah, first gear, um, we've actually done this in this car on our channel as well. No throttle at all, that's second already. Let's hit third straight away, let's really try and upset it. Let's go for fourth. Tell you what, we'll hit fifth. 
So that's fifth at uh, 10 miles an hour. I'm still not on the accelerator, we're now... Wait to see the gauge. Yeah, so we're now getting up to about 20 miles an hour, which is just under 1,000 RPM, which is where the idle is trying to settle itself because we're moving and the ECU knows that. Um, and we could sit in fifth gear at 20 miles an hour without putting the foot on the throttle pedal for a very long time. It's quite happy. We're now going up a slight incline. It's still happy. Um, but if we want to, we can uh, get on the accelerator and smoothly, that's the key, smoothly accelerate yes. in fifth from 20 miles an hour. We're already doing 50, in fact, and I've hardly pressed the accelerator pedal. And that's 60, so we'll back off. Um, obviously a big five litre engine, bags and bags of torque, a lot more than what was in the Cobra with a 4.6. Um, the CC is only 400 cc's more, but it, it does make a difference to the torque down the bottom end. And uh, yeah, the uh, TVR is a nice place to be. And all the gears are exactly where they should be. Obviously we show these cars in fifth gear all the time, but I'm in fourth gear now, cruising at 30, 35 miles an hour. And again, it's nice and smooth. Um, I could obviously drop that down a lot further if I wanted to, but um, I do often wonder to myself when people are watching our videos, they see us basically just using fifth gear for all of our tests. So here's a little bit of fourth, and it does everything that it needs to do as well, including stopping for this car coming the other way. just leave it in fourth. Uh, okay then. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it does all of that. It does the quick stuff too, obviously. It's just a happy five litre TVR. Right, back to the workshop. Let's have a look under the bonnet. Under the bonnet then, um, obviously it's got the five litre badge on top of the plenum. Runs a standard hot wire injection system. We've upgraded the RPI amplifier, which you can see mounted on the bracket up there next to the plenum. Uh, obviously magnet coil plug leads and it runs the Bosch coil. Um, we have replaced the distributor on this in the past as well because of the distributor fault. Uh, we're also running fuel pressure regulator uh, so we can maintain the fuel pressure exactly where we need it rather than on a standard one, which normally of the age, you know, that most of them are 20 plus years old, fuel pressure has dropped off by a couple of PSI, which for a standard 3.9 on a car, you're not going to notice. Uh, for a 5 litre and TVR, you, you are going to notice that and it is going to make a difference. So we've done that as well and set that correctly. Um, there are those unique TVR headers uh, coming forward in front of the engine into a huge uh, diameter Y piece that has the cat in it. Uh, these often have pre-cats as well in the manifolds for um, German TV and things. Uh, I don't know if they've been removed in this car or not. The, the pre-cats can be removed and it will still pass the UK emissions no problem at all with its standard cat and the white piece. I think that concludes this workshop update. We'll, um, we'd best start filming the next one, Steve. So soon? Yeah.